what a privilege to us be with you again today. Uh, recently my sister came and she visited and she brought me a tie from Kikkenhof Gardens in Holland because I always love the, to, look, to watch the videos and the, the photos of the flowers and of the garden there so that's the, the closest I can get to Kikkenhof. But today's background is uh, what was taken this week while we were up on a dam and, uh, on a farm called Mont de Zier in the Whoop in the Robertson area. And look at all the beautiful blossoms on the trees. So spring is really here. Now today I want to title the message Keep Moving On. Now let us pray first. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come into your presence, that we can say thank you for spring, thank you for the changing of the seasons. And yes, Lord, we know that even in our lives, there are seasons and times that change and things that need to be uh, done again. Father, many times when something has been packed away in storage for a time, you need to take it out for the new season and you need to clean it up again. Help us in this day to even look at our own spirits and say, Lord, do I need some dusting off? I honor and praise you in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now, it is in our nature in our nature to follow the road of least uh, uh, resistance, pardon me. So to pause at the obstacles and to want to turn back and to say, I don't know whether I want to go through this. Uh, if I can't go around it, I, I'm not going. Even, even turning back. If we see the people in uh, with Moses, walking with Moses through the desert and they were longing to rather go back to bondage than to endure the this, this short time of, of, of pers not persecution really, but, but of trials and to, to be able to continue. And I see uh, that our spiritual walk is no different. Paul uh, urges us on. Now let us go and read a very well-known scripture, Hebrews 6 verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God of the doctrine of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits, permit. Now, verse 1 in the Amplified reads like, the, like this. Therefore, let us go on and get past the elementary stage in the teachings and doctrine of Christ the Messiah, advancing steadily, Toward the completeness and perfection that belong to spiritual maturity. Let us not again be laying the foundation of repentance and abandonment of dead works, dead formalism, and of the faith by which you turn to God. Now, if we look a little bit closer to the th six things that, that Paul mentioned here, we can uh, start by saying repentance from dead works. And it is interesting that it was only in 1515, how many years is that after uh, Paul wrote that uh, very well-known scriptures? But only in 1515, Martha Luther, during a time of prayer and fasting, realized the truth, what uh, Paul really meant when he wrote to the Romans in Romans 3, 21 and 22. And that started the Reformation. That was only the beginning. The, the next one is faith toward God. Faith toward God needs to replace the dead works. Baptism. Uh, it's like Paul was saying, you should know by now that baptism is biblical and needs to be done. Stop debating these facts. Stop fighting around it. Accept it. Do it. And continue. Laying on of hands. The how when when should be something that we should know by now. Not to be too quick to lay on hands. And especially if this is not laying on of hands to... to, to uh, Pray for someone that is sick. No, no, this is a laying on of hands to, to ordain someone for ministry. He says, don't be too quick to do that. I know it's a nice ceremony. And it's nice to say that, that I've blessed this one. But make sure that, that God is in this. That it's God's will for that person. Resurrection of the dead. The dead shall rise again. Know it and believe it. And people, <laughs> the resurrection of the dead is something that we all look forward to. And, and we know that our loved ones, if they died with us or with Christ, they too will rise again. And the last one, eternal judgment. Another reality which should be kept in mind in whatever we do daily. Most all of these subjects received attention. Yet even today preachers 
are still reluctant to preach on this last point and for various reasons. Why don't people or preachers really preach about eternal judgment? Firstly and sadly so, churches have been so secularized that you don't dare preach something that is not politically correct. You may not tell someone that the wages of sin is death, uh, dead, uh, uh, because you are not supposed to reveal what sin, what sin is. Secondly, many preachers have also fallen in the trap where they don't know and recognize the signs of the times anymore. And thirdly, it is not a popular t topic. So why go there? Well, I can think of one verse to start off. Ezekiel 33 verse 8. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So God is very clear and, 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 he, and, he, and he told us this, he warned us, you cannot say that you are a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, yet preach the things that the people love and the people want, want to hear. People, uh, I'm telling you, you will grow a church overnight if you just prophesy uh, prosperity and, and, and health and uh, beautiful things over the people. But if they, if they aren't holy, if, they, if you don't bring them back to holiness, if they don't start being obedient to God, what type of prosperity will they have? The Bible is very clear. I say, what will it mean? What, what will you gain by, by gaining the whole world, by losing your soul? No, no. Don't uh, lose your soul over the stuff uh, of this world. So, furthermore, we get that few people uh, uh, want to preach about the last days. It's Catholicity, the, the, the last days, the end times. And many, the few that do preach that, they like to put uh, the fear of God in, in, uh, in the people. But to the point where those person, uh, people that do get um, saved in that time, get saved and, and, and make a decision based on fear. I'm afraid to go to hell. I'm afraid. But I didn't, didn't get saved because of fear. I got saved because of love. Because Jesus Christ died in my place. He paid a price. So isn't it obvious that everything that God intended for our good and to be a blessing are being perverted? The enemy wants us in bondage so that we must blame God for all the bad things while we are only reaping what we have sown and or, or ignoring the biblical road to blessing all along. Now you know, if that is what a Christian is uh, uh, looking or acting like, I don't want to be a Christian. If that is what love is, if that is the way that God's going to deal with me, I don't want to go there. And we are the ones that believes the lies. But returning to the scripture we started with, with we must understand that Paul wanted us to push on. To keep moving on. He says, it's one thing to be born again, but don't stop there. That is only the, 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 the birth. A baby don't die the moment it gets birth. I'm not talking about a still birth. Please understand me. In the normal, uh, when a baby gets uh, born, he starts to grow. You feed him. You, you teach him. And eventually he grows up and he or she matures as well. And, and that is what Paul is saying. Don't stop. Uh, stick with the night. Uh, people listen to some people when they testify. You know, 40 years ago, I got born again. I was a this and I was a that. And then I came to church and many of the testimonies sounds like God robbed them of all the joy they had. And, and now we just have got all the sour faces in a row. No, no. You need to grow from that moment that you got born again. Don't let the devil lie to you and make you believe you have no future. Don't let the devil lie to you and tell you uh, what you see now is that this is all it's ever going to be. It's not going to get better. There's no future for you. The fact is, Jesus is coming back for us. He's coming back for us. He wants us to be where he is. Why? John 14 verse 2 says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. 
How is he coming back? The word. Revelation 1 verse 7. Behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. So God says I'm coming back. When, when he ascended up to heaven Jesus says uh, the angel came to the disciples and says do you see the way that he's taking up? taken up into heaven this is the same way that he will come back again on the clouds Matthew 24 uh, continues and, 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 said, and tells us about the, something about the, when is he coming back firstly it says in verse 36 but of that day an hour knoweth no man no not the angels of heaven but my father only Yet God has given us the signs of the time to discern the season at hand. God, just as we go in this beautiful background, the moment you see all the blossoms, you know there's a new season. Something is going to happen. The, this uh, blossoms are going to fall off and this be going to become fruit. And, and this uh, trees will bear beautiful fruit. It's a new season. It's going into the summer season now. So God has given us the signs even in, uh, in Matthew 24, if you go read it. It's all over the world, a uh, Bible. God, and yes, it's all over the world. You can, if you look at the Bible and you look in the world, you will see the signs are here. God had warned us to be ready whenever. Firstly, we will have the rapture of the church as believers when Jesus come on the cloud and call his uh, children up to him. If you do not believe in the rapture, you do not know the Hebrew roots of the Bible. People, if you go look at the Hebrew wedding, and, 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 you, and, and you, then, then you will understand the marriage supper of the Lamb. Only that uh, perspective, the Bible was written up to the book of Acts, was written for the Hebrew people to understand. So you need to, to have that basic knowledge. And if you, if you look at the, the Hebrew wedding, you will see the exact way that the bridegroom treats his wife and prepares her for the marriage ceremony. That is what the rapture is all about. If you, the same goes for Joseph, which was a type of Christ in the Old Testament. If you go look at Joseph, and when it came to the point where he wanted to reveal himself to his family so that they can know who he really was, he first sent the other people out. The people that he was working with, the, the, even the, the, his own servants, he sent them out so that he can reveal him to his brothers. That is the same way. When Jesus returns, the, 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 he's going to send the others away first. And how can he send us away but by taking us away? Then those left behind uh, immediately after the rapture will go through seven years of great tribulation here on earth. Now we know that the first three and a half years will be known by the uh, the, the slogan peace peace but the Bible says when they call peace peace then the great travail will, will fall on them but halfway through this time after three and a half years the Antichrist will reveal himself for who he really is and people you must understand the Antichrist isn't the devil it's a person on earth that is Antichrist so the last three and a half years will be proper hell and then we will see how and why the mark of the beast was implemented. Why they want to, 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 to manipulate the people so that they can be in control. Not only a, a, a new world order anymore, but a one world order. Only doing that of the evil masters. At the end of this period, they will try to destroy Israel. But God will fight for his people at the battle of Armageddon in the Megiddo Valley. And then Jesus and those that died in Christ beforehand will return to earth and Jesus' feet will actually stand on the Mount of Olives. And the Bible says it will cause an, a tremendous earthquake that will split the mountain in two. After that will follow the thousand years of peace, the millennium. And only after that, after the thousand years, so we will be on this earth again. We will be ruling with God. We will be doing certain things with God uh, or then with Jesus Christ. And after that, according to Revelation 20, the great white throne judgment, where the graves will be opened and the unsaved that died will also be resurrected to stand before God. And when Satan and his demons and those who did not choose God will be cast into the lake of fire. And then only, Revelation 21, the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, the new earth, where we will spend eternity with God. 
we have something to look out for we have something to look forward to but we need to prepare for that moment today the decision you make today none of us are guaranteed that in five minutes time after hearing this today we will still be alive none of us has got the guarantee but we know that death has no hold on us so if i choose right now i will be one of those coming back with christ to live for eternity if i do not choose god it means that i'm automatically choosing for the other side the switch is either on or off there's no middle position here that will mean that i've chosen to follow the dark one and then i must not be angry one day with god to blame god if he gives me what i've chosen the other side so testify of god's goodness daily win souls for his kingdom pray without ceasing say lord i want uh, the bible says we must we must save other people like we will take a piece of wood out of the fire even if it's scarred and burned but take it out there are many people in this world today burnt by sin burnt by the enemy's works in bondage but when we uh, throw them a rope when we when we cast them a, a, a life-saving device when we we call them out to come and, and, and tell them that Jesus Christ loves them just as they are. He will change them. He will clean them. You cannot clean a fish that you haven't caught. And that's what the church like to do. We put a lot of laws out there and do this and don't do that. And No, no. Jesus says get them in first. Allow me to do the convincing. We, you and me, we... Uh, overcome the enemy by the word of our testimony your testimony and the blood of the lamb but it's only the holy spirit that can convict them and and say to them this is what really is going on i want to to pray with you and after that i want to play out of the old old song the movie's on my child the movie's on let us pray heavenly father paul is urging us to move on Paul is doing so because that is what you want us to do. To move on, to keep on going on. Not to stop, not to look back, not to uh, take out our chairs and camp around the fire and say, well, this is it, I'm just staying here. No, Lord, you want us to continue. You want us to be where you are because we were created for the marriage supper of the Lamb to spend eternity with Christ. And I honor you and I praise you. And Father, today we ask, help us help us to see help us to hear help us to understand what you want us to do the way you want us to do it and help us lord not to fight you but but to stand up and say lord i want to be where you are i want to do what you want me to do i thank you lord help us by your spirit by your grace by your power to move on in Jesus' wonderful name amen the movie's on it has started at the start of the day you gave your life to Christ and if you haven't done that please do so now please invite him in please say Lord I want you to be my mom, Lord and Savior in Jesus' name Amen the movie's on, the Lord's movie's on. The movie's on, the Lord's movie's on. I hear the whistle